Well, my accent, so thanks. Um, I just, I just said that to be game points, really, so everyone has to like me. Because anyway. there's a poem at a funeral, so, but it's happy. So. The day of the funeral, I felt ashamed. It never occurred to me to bake a cake until asked by my first cousin, once removed, what I brought to the table. The wake was small and I was starving, drank cup upon cup of tea. Never could stand sandwiches, the symbol of all that is boring, social conventions and post-domesticity, survival as work, cheese and tomato or only ham. It was a tasteful service, hymns and three floral arrangements, and the last day of sunshine for a while. Mummy's eulogy was inspired, Dad said. Giving God all the credit seemed unfair, but what can you say? Antipsychotics don't stop you believing in miracles. I found myself first in line behind the coffin. It took a nervous glance behind me to realise how I got there. My uncle, 64, is still shy, hanging back when we were meant to be walking together. The vicar is a sadist and tries to make my sister cry. You really understand the weight of water when it's clinging to your eyelids. It can lift you up or hold you down, sink or swim, they say. But it takes years of evolution to be a dark creature, unaffected by the pressure of the depths. Feelings come in waves and love and death, like riptides, are only beautiful from a distance. When far away, my family seems so solid. Characters from a faraway land whose future has yet to reach me. I don't have to see the creases form and deepen, or think that their lives too are stories unfolding. Back at the wake, I stare guiltily at some fruitcake. Sip tea, now stewed bitter as tears. <laughs>